Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this thread on Twitter put together by, uh, by, by Tooth Dominoes over here. Uh, feel free to follow him on Twitter. He is an official uh, Lego set designer, especially for these new Ninjago sets. And he actually put out a statement regarding these new sets. Of course, if you guys have not, uh, you know, been caught up to speed just yet, we actually got ourselves some new looks at some of the brand new Ninjago 2022 sets that are going to be coming out next year. Uh, these sets so far are pretty cool looking in my opinion. Uh, some of them definitely have issues, but the community has been uh, basically saying that this set is one of the worst Ninjago waves in years. I've seen a lot of complaints in my comment section and on social media, and a lot of people I guess are just kind of confused over what these sets are. Now before we begin this video, I'm not trying to defend these sets you know, from opposing opinions of mine. As mentioned, I do think some of these sets have issues in their own right. However, I also think that some of these sets don't deserve the hate that they've been getting. But as I said, if you guys have negative opinions about these sets, I'm not trying to change your opinions. I just want to present to you guys some information and explain maybe where these sets are coming from in terms of a design standpoint. So going back to the thread I have over on Twitter right here from uh, two Dominoes, one of the official uh, Lego set designers for these new sets. Uh, he's actually designed a couple of different sets for Ninjago in the past. You'll see some right here, uh, including the Hydra Mech, so that's pretty cool. The Hydra Bounty, and uh, Zane's Titan Mech Battle, among some other things. So the guy is very experienced when it comes to uh, designing Ninjago sets especially. So I figured it was worth going through this entire thread because, as mentioned, he does explain where the designers were coming from in creating, you know, these new line of Ninjago sets and this may kind of get some folks on board with these sets not saying that's my goal just saying my goal is to basically spread this around the community and let people understand where the designers are coming from so the thread begins with this tweet right here this is a thread about the Ninjago core development in spring of 2020 we got the brief for what our leadership had in mind for 2022 we were asked to come up with a line of Ninjago that would not only stand on its own without content but also be the epitome of Ninjago toys and of course he attaches an image of the new Zane mech. As you can see, this is kind of a prototype design, or at least what they were going for for a shell. Uh, he continues on with, uh, with this tweet right here. After the specialized launches like Prime Empire and Seabound, the markets asked for a wave with the classic Ninjago identity. We would not get any story continuing content in order to make sure we could get started on the second half of the year 2022 as early as possible. Thus, Core was born. So essentially what this says right here is that these new sets are not going to be involved with the actual story of 2022 at all. So a lot of people have been asking how these sets tie into season 16. Uh, long story short, they really don't. These sets are going to be their own thing entirely, not meant to follow into or at least be a part of any other Ninjago storyline. There are rumors that these sets will be getting short films, but they are not going to be tying in with Ninjago season 16 or anything like that. Some people have been speculating how Nia ties into all of this because Nia does indeed appear in some of these sets, it's not for season 16. This is not part of the main Ninjago story. This is for something else entirely. On top of all that, there was an ask to make sure that this line helped recruit younger kids into Ninjago. Between our 4 plus and our usual 7 plus end up sets, there was a gap. We wanted to have a number of 6 plus sets to fill that gap. So, to summarize that point, these sets have been primarily designed with a younger audience in mind. As you can see by some of these set images, which do look pretty, I guess, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe like toy-ish, a little more toyish than most Ninjago toys. Um, but yeah, designing sets for younger fans of Ninjago is always, you know, something that Ninjago is going to be doing. There's no way that you can make Ninjago strictly for adults unless you made like an 18 plus, you know, collector's exclusive set or whatever. But yeah, this new line of sets has been stated to be primarily targeted at, uh, at kids between four and seven. So they have a number of six plus sets ready to fill that gap like this uh, Jay's dragon set right here. Uh, moving on to the next tweet. In order to ensure an appropriate building experience for the 6 plus age mark, we started a lot of model and element concepts to explore the three cornerstones of Ninjago. 
Shadow. Vehicles, dragons, and mechs. And you can see examples right here of a mech, a dragon, and a vehicle. So it's not like Ninjago is completely losing its identity. Ninjago is still Ninjago. This new line of sets is essentially just designed to capture another core audience that maybe the Ninjago line was missing out of, you know, in previous releases and previous seasons. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, I'm not a Lego designer myself, but still, designing sets for younger Ninjago fans just expands the fan base, and this is basically what we had back in the day. This is what got me into Ninjago. Dragons, vehicles, and mechs. The three cornerstones of Ninjago, as mentioned here, so I don't think this is a bad thing once again. Uh, moving on, I was tasked to start concept work on the mech and buildable character direction. I started exploring potential building platforms and upgrade mechanics, and we have some rough sketches here for what, uh, what some early designs may have looked like for dragons and mechs, obviously playing around with different concepts and different pieces, and uh, this part of the thread I actually find to be the most interesting. Insert the SCCBS, System Character and Creature Building System, patent pending. Uh, this was previously known simply as CCBS, back when it was used in sets like Hero Factory and Bionicle, or at least those themes. It was also used in Chima for a brief period of time for their buildable action figures, among several other themes. But continuing on, here I pitched a number of potential pieces to make appealing mechs while keeping the building experience 6 plus appropriate. Uh, yeah, a lot of these older ball and socket style pieces did in fact originate from Hero Factory and Bionicle and other themes, especially, you know, this part right here. This is very much Bionicle. These are, of course, Hero Factory uh, ball and socket pieces. And also, you can see they are compared to the modern day style of ball and socket joints, which are very much designed for brick built mechs. You can see some early concepts and things like that. A lot of these pieces did in fact make it into the final products, such as this new piece right here, which is essentially a knee bend, keeping the same flexibility and posability as these pieces, but making them more brick built. It's kind of like a combination between this concept and this, which I do find to be quite appealing, and I'm excited to get my hands on some of these new pieces. A number of explorations and elements and mech expressions followed soon after, and you can see some early designs for some of those mechs as well. Uh, this is an early example of the mech for Kai, I believe, that comes in the temple, uh, the Ninja Dojo Temple set. Could be wrong about that, though. But you can see some various ideas and some rejected concepts that they were going with here. This, you know, option being labeled as being too thin, that just simply would not work. These sets had a lot of trial and error to them, it seems, and I don't really envy the set designers and what they had to do. This seems like a pretty, you know, exciting process and also a pretty confusing process as well. But the point is, the reason why I'm showing you this Twitter thread is to give you guys an understanding as to what these new sets exactly are. These are not designed for modern day Ninjago fans, or at least the Ninjago audience that I myself am used to. These are designed to more appeal to the younger demographic that maybe do not have the opportunity to collect or even get into Ninjago like we older fans do. These sets are of course not designed for season 16, let me stress that as well. These sets are not supposed to be designed to be a part of the Ninjago TV show. Are some of the design choices questionable in this new wave? Yeah, I don't like every single set that comes out of it. However, I do like some of the sets, and I will be grabbing some of them. I've just personally seen a lot of hate towards these sets, a lot of people calling it Ninjago's worst wave in years, and I don't think that's the case. Personally, if that's your opinion, that's totally fine, but my goal for this video was to essentially give you guys an understanding as to why these sets got made, what exactly these sets are, and the processes behind building these things and actually constructing them for an audience that actually wants to purchase them. So I hope you found this video intriguing, this is essentially the big truth behind these new sets, what exactly LEGO is doing with these things, and why they are designed to be the way that they are. Thank you so much for watching this video, you guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Lots of big stuff coming out for Ninjago 2022, I will be doing several videos this weekend and next week talking about more aspects of these sets that need further analyzing. I feel like these sets are going to be very important moving forward, and while they may not be Ninjago Legacy or Ninjago Season 16, I think they are worth talking about and worth considering as a new standard going forward for the Ninjago brand. I don't expect this style of Ninjago set design to take over or anything like that, but I do expect more sets like this to be released in the future. Hopefully they don't, you know, take over Ninjago Legacy or anything like that. I would like Legacy to stick around, but in the meantime, this is all the information that we have. Just the set images and, of course, the Twitter thread that I presented uh, from an official Ninjago set designer over on Twitter. So, yeah, feel free to check him out if you want to follow him and, you know, find out more about his endeavors and how these sets got made and what exactly these sets are. Uh, big shout out to him, uh, Tooth Dominoes, over on Twitter. Big shout out to you, my friend. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed
enjoyed today's video, that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here today. I'm going to go ahead and get started working on some other videos, and I hope you guys will stay tuned for those. In the meantime, though, thank you so much for watching this one, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.